Namaste, my name is Francois Gauthier. I'm a French journalist living in India. I have been defending Hindus and India for nearly three decades, both in my articles, my books. I'm also building a museum of Indian history in Pune. History as it happens, not as it has been written. So, so I have been very active and I'm proud of it uh, because India is such a wonderful country and Hindus themselves are such wonderful people. Now, yesterday on Twitter, uh, there was a message from someone who said, asked the question, why do Hindus and India still have a bad image abroad? Now, yes, absolutely, this is true. In my own country, France, where I have been saying again for many, many years through my article, I was once the correspondent of one of the major uh, newspapers in France, Le Figaro, and I kept saying that do not look only toward China. India is a land of democracy. True, it is more difficult to do business in India because it's a democracy. There is no dictatorship that can impose you know, relocating a million people or building six-lane highways or uh, shooting the corrupt people. You know how the Chinese do. They catch a corrupt official and they shoot him and they have the family to pay the price of the bullet. So that corruption is less in China than it is in India because of this fear. Now, why is it that uh, India's image abroad has not changed? In France in particular, there are three reasons. I think the first one is that most of the Western world is Christian. I mean, they are the Catholic or Protestant, Protestant in England, Catholic in France, uh, Protestant in the United States, mostly with a few Catholics. And the image of the Hindus is that of uh, people who adore multiple gods, which make them in the eyes of Christianity and also Islam as infidels, as pagans, what we say in, uh, uh, in the Christian parlance, pagans, people who are uh, religiously wrong, we risk hell because they adore multiple gods. Now, this is one of the reasons why India was attacked so ferociously by uh, Arab invaders and Muslim invaders throughout the ages because they were considered an infidels, people who adored uh, stone gods, a million stone gods. And the same thing is in France. Uh, there is a sentiment uh, of superiority that uh, we, the French, with a Christian background, the Christian education, uh, know better. We know better than India. We see that. When Sonia Gandhi comes to India, uh, uh, marrying Rajiv Gandhi, she comes to India and she does love India, she does settle in India, she does wear a sari, she speaks Hindi, but still in a conscious, unconscious mind, you know, she's a Christian. She, she believes that her civilization, her religion is better. So she comes to teach India what to do and how to do. The same true is true of Mother Teresa. She comes as a Christian to convert uh, she does good work, she adopts uh, orphans and picks up dying people in the street, which Hindus don't do, by the way, with the sentiment of my religion is superior, India should be converted to Christianity. So the first, this is the first thing, the sentiment of superiority because of Christian uh, background atavism. The second is that Western Indologists, whatever they are in the Western world, whether it's in France, Christophe Jaffrelo, United States, Witzel, Audrey Trushkin, and others uh, tend to portray India and Hindus in a very negative manner. That you know, Hindu fundamentalism is as dangerous as Islamic fundamentalism, which is an absolute untruth, uh, revolting untruth, because Hindus throughout the ages have respected the other religions. And Hinduism is the only religion in the world that never invaded another country to impose its own religion. Hinduism went peacefully. Uh, towards uh, uh, you know the east, towards the, uh, Thailand or Bali, uh, and peacefully towards the west, where it became Zarathustra in Iran and the Druid religion uh, in in the, in Europe. So, so the Western Indologists keep saying that Hindu fundamentalism and poverty and caste, caste, you know, caste. I've been living in India for you know four decades, and I know that. Indians want to go beyond caste. There is a true aspiration uh, both from the people and the government that to go beyond caste. 
so, but CASP is still playing a very important role in Indologies. And indeed, there is a revival of the Brahminical hatred that Brahmins are uh, evil. Well, I, I have done studies on Brahmins and actually Brahmins and in, in India are underprivileged. There are many Brahmins who are poor, whether they are temple priests who earn 2,000 rupees a month, whether they are toilet cleaners in Delhi in the Sulab uh, public toilets, whether they are coolies in the railway station. So Brahmins today are an underprivileged society. And the third, of course, is that Hindus never retaliate. If you say anything in China, China will stop buying Boeings or stop buying Airbuses or boycott you. Uh, if you invite the Dalai Lama, uh, if you say anything against uh, uh, Islam, they will boycott the product. But Hindus never retaliate. I mean, they don't go down the streets like Muslims when uh, you know when the cartoon is uh, done about the Prophet or kill people for that, like they did in Paris. They don't even retaliate economically. So. Haters of Hindus and India know that they can get away with it. And this is very sad because I think India is the next uh, superpower, economic superpower, because for many reasons China uh, is now on the back foot because of COVID, the origin of COVID, because of the zero COVID policy, also because uh, it is in conflict with the United States, with India and other countries like Japan and Philippines, uh, with its hegemonic attempt to absorb so many countries like Taiwan or part of India and pour its goods onto the world. So China is on the back foot now and India's, uh, I think, economic power has come. So it would be a good thing for the government of India, the BGP government of Mr. Modi, to be tougher with Western nations and Western human rights organizations that uh, demean India, that lie about India, that keeps saying wrong things about India and Hindus. So I appeal to the government of Mr. Narendra Modi to stand by human rights, to stand by and to show that India got pride and muscle to bolster that pride. Economic muscle, as well as military, nuclear muscle. India is a powerful country, but it doesn't know that it is powerful. I think that it needs to show that Maybe uh, we don't have to go to the extreme like the Chinese or Mr. Putin, but maybe more nationalism, more pride, more asserting itself would be the time, right time to do so now. Namaste.